Welcome to You in HD, your identity in higher definition with Pastor Eric Miller. Join us in our journey of faith in God by taking an in-depth look into the Bible's authority and sufficiency to guide us in our Christian walk. Discover your identity in Jesus Christ today. How you doing, Mr. Reverend Eric? Uh, this is from the Armor of God series. Uh, it's, it's a classic. It's one of, it's, uh, one of my uh, sermons I've preached. I um, hope you enjoy it. hope you it gain, you gain some insight from it. hope the Lord blesses us all from hearing it. hope you can walk away with some practical as well as spiritually good advice from the Lord on how to understand how the Armor of God works and, more importantly, how it affects us when we're out in the world and having to um, defend our faith as well as as protect those that are that are weak in faith as well. And you have to rely on God and his strength and his beauty. And uh, how to stay under the shepherd's protection and watch the lie. But uh, as as anything else we know from Ephesians, uh, we we don't fight against people's mentalities and, and, and things like we we fight on a spiritual level. So in most cases, we do have to cast down people's ideologies and imaginations, but it's, it's their spiritual sin that is that is what's hindering them from wanting to hear the truth. That's the worst part about it. It's their sin that is robbing them of the ability to hear the truth of God. They'll try to listen to human reason and think they can come up with their own ideas, but they don't realize that the majority of the problems that are in their life are self-caused. They are It's a self-destructive nature of sin. Sin consumes, sin kills. That's what it does. So it's, it's forever hungry, it's ravenous, it's never satisfied, and it is on and in every single human being from conception to death. So the only thing that can erode and destroy sin is Jesus Christ. All you have to do is put your faith and your and your trust in him, repent, be baptized, be saved. That's it. There's no other way to combat sin. And, and as, a, as a Christian, as, as we go through our life, whether we're forward or backwards, you know, whether we're we're still struggling in the flesh. We have a, a Savior that's still strengthening us. So we just have to rely on what we're fighting and who we're fighting against. And always understand that we're not fighting against those things that we can touch. We're not fighting physical wars. We're fighting a war that is far greater, far bigger battlefield. We're fighting for people's souls. And that's important. That's important that we that we always remember that that's what we're here for. So I love you very much. Talking to you soon. Reverend Eric, UNHD. This is Reverend Eric. We're going to be reading out of John 12 today uh, under the Armor of God, Belt of Truth uh, series of the first week. So uh, we're going to go from John 12, verse 42 to 40, 43. Let's go to 41 to 43. Nevertheless, among the chief rulers, also many believed on him. But because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be cut put out of the synagogue. For they loved the praise of men more than the praise of God. Now, we've, 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 we've heard of excommunication in church. We've heard uh, people getting kicked out of church because they didn't believe in what um, that shepherd was doing. Or they didn't really feel like... Uh, they wanted to keep serving God, but the church wanted to go another direction. And we heard people get ostracized for different sins that they've done because they've not been forgiven in that church and, and things of that nature. So I'm beating the church up. What I'm saying is, this is a pretty pivotal part right there. For they love the praise of men more than the praise of God. You know, that's part of the devil's meat as well. You know, when he, calls, when he gets to a point of wanting you to have self-pride. You know, my brother, uh, Brooke, had made a, a good, good point. He had a revelation uh, last week. Uh, when he was listening to K Love, and it was a man that called in that uh, his friends were trying to get to become a Satanist. Which now, before we go down that, that, that before it sounds it sounds more devious than it is. But when the, the, about the word itself, Satanist, because Satan basically means self. You know, let me, let me let me worry about idolizing myself. Let me go ahead and get into loving myself. Let me get into promoting myself. You know, these are self-made blessings. I can do these things. I can do all things who strengthen myself. That's what the the, the devil wants us to believe. And a lot of us have. But here's the other thing, too. Praise. We love to be praised. We love to have our, our, our plaques on the wall. We love to have our ribbons. We love to have our, our pats on the back. Now, I'm not saying all those things are terrible, but we, we want them more so 
then we want the praise of God. And his praise comes in, it comes very differently because most of the time it's no one else can hear it. It's just you. It's just you and him that can hear that and says, hey, I'm very proud of you, son. I'm very proud of you, daughter. Good job. We want to hear the clapping and the ovation and the, the standing standing crowd of 20,000 people. And that's a little you know, stretching it, but you understand what I'm saying. We love to hear the praise of man, especially inside the church. Can you imagine that? Read that one more time. They love the praise of men more than the praise of God. And why is that? Because they believed in Christ, but they didn't want to get kicked out of church because the rulership was like, hey, we believe God, but we don't believe Christ. You know, and that's where our religion really is in a lot of areas, uh, the alternate religions and things of that nature. It's all lumped together. There's so much that, that, that can be said about people with the embracing of who God is, but the minute the name of Jesus gets mentioned, everything falls apart and blows up, and now all of a sudden we're called racist and we're called prejudiced, we're called, you know, all these negative things, all because of the name of Jesus, which evokes truth. The name of Jesus evokes truth. And the truth of the matter is, they wanted to stay part of the synagogue. They loved Jesus. They loved Jesus, and they loved who he was. But they loved men more. They loved the idea of men more. And who does that sound like? It sounds like the devil's at work. If I want to get kicked out of my church, I want to get kicked out of my community, I don't want to lose all the friends that I've had, let me just go ahead and stay in church, and God will forgive me. Well, we have to learn how to accept the praise of God. We have to learn how to accept the praise and the truth of God. How can we ever go through our life, a Christian life if we don't accept the truth of God? We're not the, the praise of God. God says in Romans 8, I will, I will not only justify you, I'm going to glorify you. Well, isn't that a huge thing? I mean, you know, rather than me just read it, let me say, quote it out, let me read it because I can never... You can't ever get too much of that word. Let me be straightforward. You know, I don't know. I can't speak for you, but I know there's a lot of us that's reading them, that listen to these, these videos and go, man, we love the word of God. So here we love the word of God. So here we go. We're going to go to Romans 8. And we're going to go to uh, we're gonna go to 8, verse 29. And we're going to go to 32, so 29 and 30. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be firstborn amongst many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate them, he also called. And whom he called them, he also justified. And whom he justified them, he also glorified. Man, we can sit there all day in this meet and go through it, but you understand where I'm going. We have to be in a state of mind to where we let God praise us. We accept his praise. And we praise God. We are in a business. And I say not your business, but that's the best way I can put it right now. We're in the business of praising God. This is we're in the business of hope. We're in the business of triumph. We're in the business of victory. We're in the business of salvation. We're in the business of love. That's God's business. And we are in that business now. And we are partakers and fellow authors in this life that we're walking through. And we have to learn to accept the praise of God and help the and, and the praise of, of God in everything that we do. The church does not dictate our praise of God. The church is an embodiment of the praise of God. It is the very arm and the bride to, that, that walks up and hugs Christ every day. That's what goes on every day at church. So if you're more afraid of, of losing your church versus losing, losing your faith and losing your praise of God, we're in some trouble. So go back to that passage one more time, because it's going to be one more time we go over. For they love the praise of men more than the praise of God. That will go down to 44. Jesus cried and said that they believeth on me, believeth not of me, but on him that sent me. Read it one more time. He that believeth on me, believeth not on me, but on him that sent me. And he that seeth me, seeth him that sent me. And I am coming light into the world, that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. Now that verse 46 is real big. I am coming to light into the world that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. Do you know what else that, that also speaks to me very loud with? Those that believe on me will also believe that I am the truth of this world and you will not live in a lie of darkness. You will not live in a lie of darkness that's going to keep hiding and, and, and keeping you away from your blessings. If we do not start to accept the praise and the blessings of God, and we keep looking to the praise and blessings of men. We're going to run out. Men, we don't have enough in us. The race of men. This is, this is the same men that, that, 
that, that, that destroyed the God of Eden. This is the same men that crucified Christ. These are the same men that have continually done evils on this earth. That, that is, they're insurmountable. And we want their praise. We want praise of a man that does not love God, that does not know God, that does not know Jesus. That they know that I run this church, I run this position, I run this company, and I'm going to do what I want to do, and, and I'll tell you what you believe in. If you don't believe in what I believe in, you're out of here. Well, guess what? We need to be, we need to be in the mentality, well, let me go ahead and grab my bag and let's get up out of here, because I'm in the business of praising God. I'm in the business of, being, of, of, of justifying the salvation, defending the faith, and, and offering uh, salvation out of love. I'm not in the business of trying to, to, to pad your bottom line. I'm not in the business of trying to pad your followers and your, pad your numbers. I'm trying to love and raise the name of God. And we do that through the name of Jesus. So, one of the truths that we can learn from these passages today is that we have to learn how to abide in the truth of Jesus Christ and the truth of God. We have to learn not to keep looking over our shoulder to see, hey, did, did, did my boss really give me some, some good kudos after I did what I did? No, no, no. Ask yourself, close your eyes and ask yourself, Lord, am I doing something pleasing to you today? Am I doing something pleasing to you today, Lord? And he will tell you, yes, yes, Eric, you have. Or oh, no, Eric, you kind of messed up today. God is so good. He will tell you these things. A checks and balance every single day. You got a better checks and balance checks and balance system in your body right now by the name of the Holy Spirit that can teach you and guide you through everything that you're doing. We just have to have faith in it. We have to have faith in God. We have to have faith in His sovereignty. We have to have faith in His truth, which all the devil wants you not to do. The devil would love for you to just look at yourself and say, only praise yourself. So the belt of truth uh, for the armor of God, I, I can tell you we have to stick so close to the truth of God and the wisdom that He has endowed in us and gave us in the Holy Spirit. And to better understand that, in uh, Colossians 1.13, He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of His beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. We can never turn away from this. This is a very important passage to always understand why we were delivered out from this world and delivered to, uh, to God through Christ. We have to contend with this very truth every day in our minds because we have to contend with the idea that it's, it, it's under fire by the devil. And he will do everything he can to convince you that you are not saved. You are not who you think you are. You've seen that through many many of the uh, scriptures. You see that in Matthew 4 where he calls about constantly questioning. He tried to con question our Lord and Savior after he came out of the wilderness. To get us to question about our identity. To get us to, to prove to him that, that we are who we say we are. We ain't got nothing to prove to anybody. We have nothing to prove besides by our works and our good, and our, and our, and our, and our good works done by the fruits of the Spirit. That we have to have to outwardly say what we're good at more so than the, the God of glorifies us and justifies by the very works that we do in His Son's name, in the name of Jesus. So we have to contend with the truth of who we are and the gospel that was entrusted in us and the salvation that's been entrusted in us. With these truths, we can battle the devil every single day because you've got to remember, one of his greatest battlefields that he uses right up here in our brains, right here in our hearts, if he can get us to question those things and battle into those things, this is where we stumble. And it's not going to be easy and it's not perfect and we go through many, many stumbling blocks. But in the end, we always have to come back to the Word of God. However medium we can get to it, whether it's through a physical Bible, whether it's through our smartphones, whether it's through our computers, there's so many access points to get to the Word of God. And that is all so we can stay saturated heavily in God's truth. This is Reverend Eric Miller. Thank you very much for always tuning in. Thank you for, for, the, for the warm uh, letters and emails that I get every day. Thank you for the encouragement. And uh, continue to donate to the ministry and help this ministry move forward. And if you have anything that, that uh, any doubt in your mind about who you are, Always understand, you are a child of God. You are a redeemed soul. And you have been completely pardoned from your sins. And we can go forward in life and, and, and planning our life better and to serve God better, to serve the kingdom with everything that we do. And we can do that by the truth of God and the, by the Holy Spirit that dwells in us. This is Reverend Eric. I'll see you soon. You have just listened to You in HD, Your Identity in Jesus Christ with Pastor Eric Miller. This ministry is made possible by your thoughtful prayers and donations. Join us each week as we continue to explore our Christian identity in Jesus Christ. May God richly bless you. In Jesus' name, amen.